So welcome back to another Sea Lightning Live with Nifty and I. Um, I've been totally off my schedule. I think I missed all of last week and then today, but I got sick yesterday. So part of the reason I'm not, haven't really been online basically yesterday and then some of today is because I haven't been feeling well, but feeling better. Uh, yeah, anyways, um, so if you were around over the weekend, I did a bolt-a-thon. Um, with about, uh, it's called Fast Strike. It was an orientation guide to Sea Lightning and Bitcoin D. Um, but during, it was only 50 minutes. I didn't have time to cover everything that I wanted to cover. So what I want to do today slash right now um, is go ahead and finish off like all the stuff that I've sort of prepared for the um, it's a bunch of stuff. All the stuff that we, I prepared but didn't get to for the bolt -thon, um with the hopes that you can watch both of them and have a decent idea of all the stuff. So um, last place that we left off with um, at the bolt thon is that we just finished sending a payment between two nodes. So I've got this L1 CLI and L2 CLI, which are basically two um, lightning daemons that are running on my... Uh, so I have two lightning daemons and one Bitcoin D running on my machine. All of them are in reg test, which is the regression test network for Bitcoin client. Um, okay, cool. But what I wanted to show you, so I've got, I've got two things. One's called L1, um, and one's L2, um, and they're currently, let's know, uh, L1, CLI, list peers, um, yeah, so they're currently connected, and we've sent a payment. So um, L1s, so like every, so every Lightning node has something called the Lightning directory. Um, in it, you typically have your config files, and then there's, um, typically you have a config file, you have a um, L1, there's test. Um, config file, um, a PID file, um, we have a log file here, but you set where the log is in config, so that that's not canonical. That's like wherever you want it to be. Um, I'll talk about this PID in a bit. Um, and then in dot eight, which is the version of Sea Lightning that's coming out next, we're looking to get a release out this week sometime. Um, in dot eight, um, you'll have like a reg test. You could have a test net and a main net um, kind of directory that holds um, data for each of those networks basically in inside the lightning directory um, but yeah if you if you're not on that you, everything that's in like this reg test will be up a level in the same directory but um, anyways okay so we're on reg test um, yeah and there's okay right and there's four files basically that you need that your lightning node needs to function um, two of them are state related things. The gossip store is all the gossip. It just holds the gossip. And then there's a SQLite database and HSM secret. And then this is actually, um, if you watch the Boltathon talk, I talk about how this is a socket, um, the RPC socket that lets you connect RPC clients to it. Um, okay, cool. But so what I want to show you really fast is how to look at this SQLite database. Um, so if you have the SQLite thing installed, you can just open it up and look at it. Um, so we're in reg test, and then there's lightning D super light thing. Um, if you've ever used this before, it's pretty straightforward. You can like see tables and stuff. Um, you can look at like the schema for the channels table is pretty cool. So that's like what everything is. Um, we can see what all is in peers. Oops, like that's from oh, so this is you know just typing in SQL. Um, kind of helps to see what the schema is for peers. Um, so we have an ID, a node ID, which is this, um, and then the address. So this is, I'm looking at the database for the first node, and we're connected to the second node, and the second node's address is indeed localhost at the port 9090, which is pretty cool. Um, I think I can do, is it blob or maybe hex of node ID? from peers yeah cool so this is the um this should be the node id of the what do you call it of um of two and we can actually check i mean this of course it's going to be that but um 
Yeah, so this peer ID that we had in the database on one matches the ID for the second node that it tells us, which is cool. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. Um, if you ever need to look at anything, um, select flat from channels. So you can see all the kind of like just channel y stuff in there. Um, yeah, what are the tables again? Um, cool. Transactions, database upgrades, forwarded payments. So these would be like where HTLCs, I think, get held. These are our signatures for HTLCs. Um, actually, kind of curious where. from HTL, this is schema of HTLC6. Okay, this isn't really that interesting. Um, oh, it just has the signatures for channels. Okay, yeah, interesting. Cool. What was the schema for channels again? Oh, this is too much stuff to read through. Okay, cool. Anyway, so this is here. This is kind of cool. Um, you can see stuff in it. That's nice. Um, great. Turn with that. Um, okay, so then the other thing in um, in here is this HSM secret file. Um, this is just like your secret key. So since this is on reg test, I can like show you what's in here. Um, what is it like cat? What happens if I cat? Uh, cat and backspace. Let's toss it to some secret. Uh, it's a bunch of junk. That's cool. Um, anyways, it's like however many. How big are seeds? A BIP32 seeds are like, I want to say 64 bytes of data. Anyways, it's like 64 bytes of data, which like stuff, you know. Um, okay, but you can encrypt. Okay, so anything that I don't know if we've released this or since if it's been added since it's either in 7.3 or definitely will be in point eight, which we released this week. Um, the HSM, so HSM secret you can actually encrypt. Which like, hang okay, on, let me pull up my like HSM tool. Um, okay. Right, so there's a tool in here in tools called HSM tool, uh, which you can look and see what it does. Um, so it's got four methods that it does. Um, I don't know what these are. I think these are for like, if you run into trouble and you want to dump all of your commitments to a thing, um, you can do with that. I don't know what guest remote is. I don't know what this does. This could use a little more um, information, but uh, okay. So let's say we want to encrypt our um, our HSM secret for one. So we would do one L1 reg test. We're still in reg test, and then HSM secret, um, and then like let's make our password super secret, super secret password. Okay, so now um, super secret is on. Um, Let's try. Okay, so now if we um, if we stop, so if we do L one C L one stop, do shutdown complete. Um, Rusty wanted me to point out that when you call stop, shutdown complete doesn't return until the node is actually dead, which is different than how Bitcoin D works. Bitcoin D returns immediately, and so you don't you have to like basically pull the process ID to figure out when it's ended. Um, but landing CLI disappears completely. Um, we should be able to see that in uh, temp one. Let's see test. The PID file will be gone. Yep. Okay. So you know earlier we had this. Um, oh gosh, I gotta keep going up. Um, earlier when we looked in here, we had a PID file. Um, that PID stands for process ID. Um, well, it's gone now, so we can't see it. But we can actually. Well, we should see it in. Um, L2 should still be running, so it will still have a, um, a PID file. We can see what the process ID for the um, second. I'm totally off track now. That's fine. Okay. Um, well, I'll just finish this this PID thing. So we can see what the um, L2 PID is um, just by catting it. It just has a number in it. It's just a file with a number in it. So I know that the L2 reg test is currently running on this process ID, which is 
kind of cool. I don't know if you needed to look that up for some reason. There you have it. Um, and then the process, the presence or absence of this file will tell you whether or not that lightning daemon is actually up and running, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, cool. So let's see. Um, where were we? Oh, right. So we encrypted, I went ahead and encrypted the thing. So now if I try and start, um, so now if I try and start, um, Lightning D using, um, I don't actually need it. Oh, if I need the equal sign here, let's find out. Oh, and reg test. I think you can do that. Um, yeah, okay, so now I need to pass in an HSM encrypted. So I can either do this here um, as a config, or um, I can do it on, if I open up that directory, L1, oops, I don't know, it's just config. Um, I can also just add it as an encrypted, encrypted HSM. Okay, cool. Um, no, that should work. Oh, secret password. What was it? Super secret. Cool. And now it should be running. So, oh, we can check it. How do we check if it's running? Well, we can check that it's running with temp um, L1 rush test. Look, there it is. There is our rush test PID. So that's a good indication that it's up and running. Okay. Um, while we're on the topic of like um, PIDs and stuff, um, one thing that I wanted to do is this, yeah. Um, so, well, is this like a good, oh, let's just, okay, hang on. Well, no, we'll keep talking about it. Okay, so the lightning daemon is actually like a bunch of different um, processes that are running all at the same time. Um, you can see them all using PS, um, which is kind of fun. Um, so, well, we know that this is L1 because the directory that we're using is um, this guy. Well, um, this one was started with that start LN thing, and it's using L2, and this we just started just now. Um, this PID should match what's in the, um, so if I cat L temp L1. Test, lightning D. It should be the same as this. Yeah, cool. Um, right, so this is a forest of like process IDs um, for my user. Um, and so you can see that like this this L1 that we started actually has a bunch of um, subdaemon children. Oh, and if you, okay, so if you're paying attention to the first one, remember how I talked briefly about how when you run make install, it installs a bunch of binaries in this lib exec thing? Um, yeah, here you can see that it's actually, that's what the binaries it's running are in libexec. And that's because I call lightning D here, which was the system installed one, whereas this one points directly at the one. So when it, you're running, um, when you source the um, startup reg test script that I went over in the last video, um, it automatically points to basically the binaries that are built by your, um, by make locally in the um, lightning directory, which is what you want when you're developing. You want to be using the binaries that you're generating every time you run make without having to run make install. But if you just run lightning D, it uses um, the stuff that's installed with, um, you know, the make install command. Okay, uh, that's kind of cool. Um, oh, right, so it is all this stuff. Um, so you can kind of see what the relationship of a plugin is to the main Lightning D daemon. It's a child, it's a child process that's running in here. Um, there's three that come with C Lightning kind of automatically and they're fun channel, auto clean, and pay. And these are just commands that you run, but the way that they're implemented is as plugins, like internal package plugins, basically. Um, and then right now, like the, the number of daemons, sub daemons that run under Lightning D, like, fluctuates a lot depending on how many extra channels you have connected, whether you're in the process of opening a channel, whether you're in the process of closing a channel, there's other daemons that pop in and out for different things. But um, And these are each their own little binary, right, that just communicates with Lightning D over, um, Lightning D will start up and kind of send it file descriptors to communicate along. Um, so this channel D1 um, manages the connection between the two. We have a channel open between these two, so this will have this channel. And then um, 
there's the gossip daemon, which is keeping track of that gossip file that we looked at. Gossip store is what we call it. Um, kind of manages talking to other peers to get gossip. Um, Connecty is like a daemon that anytime you run connect, you use it to connect out or also is like listening. Um, I believe Connecty is the one that's running on that 9735 or like in the case of these ports like 9090 or 6060. Um, kind of managing any new incoming connections and then when it gets them spinning them off into new channel d kind of maintenance stuff and then hsmd this is um this is the daemon that controls and uses the hsm secret um yeah and just as a side because we also talked about that lightning the, the sql light file the only daemon that reads and writes from the database is lightning d itself cool so basically for the most part there's a few exceptions with gossip d and HSMD, there's a few exceptions, but for the most part, each of these individually communicates mainly with Lightning D. So it's kind of like a microservices architecture if you wanna get, um, I don't know, use like enterprise language to talk about how this is done. Um, okay, cool. We talked about all these, we locked down, HSM secret, okay. Um, so while I was getting ready for this, I actually found a bug in, um, found a crash in HSM tool, um, right, right. So I've encrypted my password, but for whatever reason, let's say I don't wanna have to encrypt it anymore. Um, just cause that's kind of annoying to have to type in my password every time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and decrypt it. Um, hold on, reg test. Reg test. Was it HSM secret? Um, oh, that didn't work. Segmentation fault, core dumped. Um, huh, well that's tricky. How do we de debug that? Okay, so usually I use GDB, um, and since we're passing in args, you need the args flag. Args are basically anything that comes after, I think. Um, so basically what this is going to do is it's going to run this binary, because HSM is just like, HSM tool is just like another binary, like connect to your HSMD, um, and you can run it kind of like under GDB. Um, and this args flag just tells GDB to take these arguments and pass them to the binary under test instead of trying to interpret them itself. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to do the same thing. This is like what crashed, right? I'm going to run it under GDB. Um, cool. Um, so basically it starts up, but the program's not running. It just kind of like does it. So if you want to set breakpoints, you can do it. But what I want to see is the backtrace of what happens. Um, so there might be other better ways to do this. This is just how I happen to like mostly do it. So usually I just run it and then it crashes and then I hit backtrace and it tells me exactly where it back, exactly where the thing failed. Um, so it's in tools, HSM tool at line 98. Um, that's the wrong one. So I can just go in here and go to what tools, HSM tool dot C line 98, cause that's what they said. Um, Actually, 375. I, so, like, the problem here is that, oh, mm, is that right? Mm. The problem here is that there's no, it says our count needs to be less than four because our VC, I believe, is, um, this is like the fourth element of the array. So, this needs to be, I think. I think that's what's going on here. Though, why does this go up to six? If this is only checking for five. Um, this should be seven, right? This should also be seven because I'm saying that because this number is six, so that should be seven. Um, okay, so let's. Okay, so we're gonna need to make it. Um, changed it. Now we make it. Now we run it. Um, yeah, it doesn't tell me what the problem is, but now I should be able to do. 
and it works. Great. Um, yeah, okay. I don't know if that's a good thing, but okay, cool. So that's kind of how you can do GDP stuff on processes. Um, and we learned how to decrypt and encrypt HSM tool. Um, I don't know what these do, whatever. There's lots of little things like that. Um, okay, so we do egg to crash. Uh, I don't really want to talk about logs too much. Um, you can get logs out by calling get log. It's like usually it's like full of stuff. Um, I don't. I think by default, Lightning D does not write logs to disk. It keeps them in memory, and the only way to get them out is using a log CLI get log. Um, I really like writing stuff to disk, um, so my logs are in. You can like look at. Um, there's no like log rotation though, so um, it just is wrong. There's no log rotation or anything, so you kind of have to keep track of making sure this, yeah. Um, control C. Um, kind of have to keep track of how big this file gets, or like set up some sort of log rotation on your own because um, Lightning D does not do that for you. That I know of. Last I know, I know that Rusty wrote a lot of how logging stuff works for this version, but. I'm not really sure what those changes were. Anyways, so like, yeah, you can see stuff like peer out, peer in. Um, and all this is because I've got debug log level turned on. Um, I don't know. Okay, cool. Uh, cool, those are logs. Yeah, oh, and you set those up in this config file. So I have log level debug, and then if I have log files set, it'll write it out to the file. If you don't have this set, it won't, it'll just keep it in memory. Okay, cool. Um, this whole organizing your Lightning D thing, I don't really want to talk about. Um, I don't really want to talk about the plugin directory and plugin command. I think you can, well, I could install one, but um, yeah, okay, I guess I'll go through that. Um, cool, so I'm going to finish out, oh, quickly just do a couple other RPC clients that you can do, and then talk about um, plugin directory just really quickly. This might take me like 10 minutes max, but okay, cool. So um, one thing that we went over in um, the Voltathon talk was how the RPC file works exactly and that C Lightning ships with an RPC client called, it's written in C and it's called Lightning CLI and it's meant to be used on the command line. Um, other people have written in RPC clients. I just wanted to like kind of run through them. Um, there's one in Python that ships with C Lightning. It's in Contrib. It's called PyLightning Client. Um, we can see it here. This is the. It's called Lightning.py. Um, but this is the whole file that basically talks to. What was I going to show you? Um, basically, it wraps. Um, it wraps calling the C Lightning stuff and kind of gives everything like a function name. So you can use a Python. I don't know where it is. Um, mm, oh, yeah. That's a really strange socket. Yeah, can we go here? That's cool. This is still lightning.py, I think. Um, Yeah, basically this does the exact same thing as Lightning CLI, but in Python and wrap stuff. So you have method names. Um, there's also one in JavaScript that Dorosio has written. Um, so if you wanted to write plugins for C Lightning in um, To rate, uh, yeah, a C Lightning JavaScript one, there's one. Uh, if you wanted to do a C++, uh, it's a C++ wrapper. So if you wanted to build a plugin or I guess an RPC in C++, there's one here. Um, um, there's also a plugin library in C that Rusty wrote that ships as part of C Lightning. It's in the plugins directory called libplugin. You can check that out. Um, the pay and fun channel plugins are also in here um, and they use it if you want an example. So I did the fun channel one a while ago. Um, it's kind of fun. 
uh, what else? Um, I wrote one in Go, so you can use a Go Lang driver and see. Um, it's a lot out of date. I need to update it for like 7.3. And then, um, oh, right. So this is like, the, and then, okay. So sort of leads into like our plugin stuff. So, right. So all of these that I just went over um, aren't just for plugins, they're also for like an RPC thing. So if you wanted to build an app that called RPC stuff, you could use any of these libraries. Um, but if you're gonna, and these libraries also all include stuff to make a plugin. Um, plugins are really nice because they hook into other stuff that, um, like hooks and notifications that you can't get through the commands that it exposes. Um, cool. Okay. And so this is like a repository of plugins. So one thing that I thought would be kind of fun is just really quickly to, um, so we did this, um, really quickly kind of install a plugin just for giggles. Um, there's a plugin that will let you install plugins from the command line. It's called Reckless. I don't know if it's in here. I don't see it in here. Yeah. Um, it's an experimental plugin manager that will let us install other plugins. Um, so all I have to do is take the binary of this and put it in the right place. I don't actually think I would do this though. Okay, so this is a thing you can do. You can use this to like find and download stuff for you, I think. It's fine. That's cool. Um, what I want to do is I want summary. I'm going to install this. This is fun. Um, so all I need is I need to get the requirements, which I already, I already installed them. So like I know it's fine. But uh, let's, see. let's go to the raw version. Um, so. Um, so if I go to, um, so there's a plugin directory in, um, like C lightning root file, whatever. So we're back at like the C lightning, um, thing. There's a plugin directory and it's got, so any binary runnable binary executable, I guess is what they call them. Any executable in the plugin directory, um, will be started as a plugin at, um, node start basically. Um, so we can try, so if I like, hang on, if I have to be got, oops, nope. Um, doo -doo. Uh, 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 um, and then also get, that's good. Let's just like, grab this. I didn't want blame. I wanted raw. Raw. Okay. Um, okay. And then we get that as well. Um, okay. So I need to, I need to install the dependencies. Install our requirements. So, um, yep. Three. Install our requirements. I didn't like totally fuck something up. It's fine. Oh wait, shit. Um. Oh yeah, it already existed. I I did the wrong folder. That's fine. Okay, but so the one I just downloaded with W get is actually called that. Um. Anyways. Uh yeah. Cool. And then um, I'm going to move, what is it? What is this called? It was called like summary.py. So here it is. So I, I meant to install this in here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it to plugins directory. Um, and then I need to add, I need to make it executable so that it'll actually run when I run plugins. So summary.py is now executable. Uh, so now when I list everything in plugins, it's here and it's also this beautiful yellow color, which means it's executable. Um, okay, cool. So now if I stop LN and then start LN, do, 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 they should start no problem. Right. So if I do LN CLI, um, help now, um, 
there should be a new thing under plugin command. So the summary adds the summary plugin adds a new command to my lightning node that it's attached to. Um, so you can see it here. We can also see that PSF thing. You can also see that it's running underneath both of these. It's like a Python 3 thing. So that's kind of cool. See it like executing. Um, cool. Um, so what happens if I call that new, whatever you call it, thingamajiggy, thingamajig. Um, cool, so it just gives me a summary of my node. It tells me what network I'm on. Um, warns me I have no public address, um, tells me what's available out, what's available in, um, private offline channels, these pop up here. Um, yeah, you can see that I've got a lot out and there's in. And so since it was in the plugin directory, when we restarted both L Lightning 1 and L2 will have it. So you can kind of see that this channel balance is like totally reversed, um, which is cool. Okie dokie, um, what else? Oh, so the other last thing is that like, um, plugins can have like options. So I think I can do, um, and those are like specified by the plugin. So like this one is, this is so short. I mean, look how tiny this is. Okay, maybe that's not the tiniest thing, but um, there's two options on it. One summary currency and the other summary currency. I think you have to set these up when you run it. I don't think I can set them here. Um, but let's say the currency I want to be is Euro. Yeah, so I'd have to go to, um, have to go over here. So let's say I want like, um, see one thing to be, and these you can just add to here. Um, I want to be Euro, and then for giggles, I want to make change the prefix from USD to be, um, Euro prefix, so Euro symbol. So I'm not cool enough to know how to. Um, can I just highlight this? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so now if I. Is there a way to start on again? If I. Yeah, I stop and then. So yeah, so now it shows it in euros and L2 will still be in um, dollars, which is fun. Um, right, and so then you can kind of see that those got set up um, with list configs, which shows you that um, summary has two options and they've been set to this, which we just set. It's cool. Um, I wonder what L2 does, I'm curious, L2, oh yeah, it shows you what the defaults are, cool, 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 okay, so that's kind of like, that's not anything about like how plugins actually work, that's sort of like the, here's what a plugin is and how you install one, um, definitely check them out though, there's some cool stuff, um, one other thing you should know about plugins is there's like a plugin command that will list them. Um, so it lists all the stuff that's currently running, and then there's also a, this plugin command has like sub plugins, um, like stop summary, does that work? I think you have to do, this is like horrible, okay. Maybe stop summary.py, does that work? Oh, summary.py is not um, dynamic, so you can't change it. There's like a dynamic flag thing. Anyways, um, there's a stop fun channel. I don't think this one also can be stopped. Anyways, so there's like dynamic plugins that we started and stopped it and like added dynamically at run while Lightning D node is running, but the plugin has that. Um, Okay, uh, cool. So we did all that stuff. Um, since I still feel like talking a little bit, uh, no, I'm gonna save this stuff for later. So a couple things we didn't cover is like running C Lightning nodes over Tor, or writing plugins, but um, I'm pretty sure that Rusty did an even better job of covering, wow, what the hell, 
Um, great. Um, see lightning over tour is actually something that I personally haven't figured out how to do yet, but that involves setting up a tour node. So, you know, um, and then someday I'll do that. I'll run a tour node someday, someday. And then the other one is writing plugins, which Christian and Rusty um, talked about at the Boltathon. So I don't feel bad about not going into it. Um, I'm actually going to look up. Uh, I know the Boltathon was tweeting earlier. Um, this guy. Oops. Um, Let me tweet all this stuff. Um, yeah, okay. So if you're interested in watching the first one, um, the link to it is here. And then um, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, Rusty and Christians should also be here. So Rusty goes into kind of more advanced stuff with like hooks, which is cool. Wait, this looks like it's the wrong. like they have the wrong speaker name on that that's cool um and then christians is also up here somewhere where's christians yeah christian's got some cool stuff he, uh, he's adding these um he's adding the ability to be able to send and receive um some cool like you can make custom onion packets basically which lets you Oh, and I think he also made it so you can send custom messages. Um, yeah, so Christian's here, and you should like, go watch that one. And then um, Rusty is, which is more on plugin-oriented stuff, is here. Okay, cool. Uh, great for – thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, I hope that you learned a lot about Sea Lightning stuff. And, um, yeah, maybe I'll do these other ones at a different date, but not today.